and we are back for our final seven. Wow. <laughs> So here's something <laughs> behind the scenes thing. You want to do the intro? No, you do this intro. <laughs> here's the thing. Uh, so we have a producer behind the camera that every once in a while gives us things that she wants us to say. Reminders. And, and some that. things like there's going to be the magic, uh, magical athlete stream tonight from 7 to 9. So I'm going to say welcome mm -hmm. back to the final segment. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the corner of my eye, I see seven to nine, and it comes the final seven. <laughs> so this is why I'm not a professional, yeah. Mike. No, yeah. You're totally legit. You got this. <laughs> so anyway, than I would. there is going to be a, uh, this is not the last stream of the day. This is the last stream that we're going to be on yes. for the next hour. We're going to be here with Plan B Games. Suzanne's coming up in 30 minutes, but tonight at seven o'clock Eastern time, make sure to join the Dice Tower Twitch and YouTube channel for a special game of magical athlete and you're going to see a lot of your favorite people on there people may be wondering where are tom Sa uh, tom sam and z tom <laughs> sam and z during all this and why are these guys sitting in sitting in the four of them doing such a wonderful job introducing <laughs> things <laughs> <laughs> now they're probably rethinking their choice for this but they're out there they're having fun at the con and hanging around but at night they will be doing their live stream so yes. make sure to turn tune in tonight at 7 p.m but now we are excited to have mike young from plan b games who we actually referenced earlier because you got a lot of hot games coming out right now i'm told I know. i'm told I know. and we've already actually kind of mentioned coimbra and we've mentioned east and wonders, but one we haven't had a chance to talk about is Reef. And Mike is now going to tell us about this game that was just came out in early pre release, maybe at, at Origins. Right. And then will be officially released, I guess, at Gen Con or yep. next? So, so soft launch at Origins, soft launch here, just to kind of get interest going. Uh, but Reef distributes in August. Perfect. So, Gen Con. Season, Gen Con. We'll just say Gen Con. Perfect. So what is Reef about? Reef is so cool. So it's on the next move line. It's it's our abstract line. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of the follow-up to Azul. Uh, two or three things that I like to point out is that these pieces are really nice and chunky. Yeah. I don't know if oh, the mics These are pick chunky. Them up, I love these. these but uh, they have nice weight and heft to them. Yes. Uh, but in the game itself, you are growing as a coral reef and trying to do a little bit of pattern building and scoring to beautify yourself. So you're gonna have a little bit of a setup. Do we have an overhead cam? Yes, uh, yes we do. Perfect. I'm gonna set this up right over here, just right like there. this. So this is gonna look a little familiar to you if you played Sentry. Um, mm -hmm. And the reason why is? Emerson Matsuuchi. He's also a designer, designer of this, and this, uh, and this game. Yes. So uh, in the game, you're gonna start with a couple pieces on your player board. And for all intents and purposes, I'm going to set this up for a scoring in just a sec here. But we'll get one of each color out here. Is it usually random, or how is it usually so determined? You're going to get four pieces, mm -hmm. and you're going to determine however you want to after you look at your hand. I'm, okay. I'm intentionally going to score this. Okay. For viewers at home, I'm going to get uh, a couple points here for doing this. But you'll set up your board using the inner four pieces. Uh, on my turn, I want to be able to do one of two things, play a card or draw a card. Okay. Oh, that's simple. If I play a card, I first look at the top, and I'm going to grab the pieces here okay. and place them anywhere on my reef that I want. No adjacency rules. I don't have to double stack them. Do whatever I want to. Okay. Then after I've done that, I then score based on the bottom, and I'm going to score for every pattern that this is uh, occurs. So this tells me I need to have something that's three tall with purple on top. Okay. So okay. in this case, I would get four points for doing that, which would then just go into my little tableau. If I wanted to draw a card out here, mm -hmm. these out here are free. I just add it to my hand, conveyor belt style like Sentry, and this gets replaced. If for some reason I really want this card that's on the deck, I gotta take one, I put it the lowest Ooh. value card that's out here, and this goes to my hand. Lowest okay. value card being this one right here. So mm -hmm. as, as they conveyor belt, it's not the mechanism where they get cheaper and cheaper, it's just you're always looking at that number? Exactly, okay. yes. Nice. So you're gonna look at the lowest, lowest number in the corner, and you add it to that. If I happen to take that card, I get the point with it. Yes. Okay. So play is going to keep on going until you either run out of pieces of one color or your deck is depleted. Okay. Oh. So how does the scoring work for like some of these other uh, so icons here? We'll get a couple examples. So you have a, a diagonal scoring. So this tells us if we have three reef uh, that are green in a diagonal, I'm going to score points. What if it was like 
that guy on top of a three. Would that still work? It would, because all you're doing is looking top down. Okay. Now, with some of these that have a number on them, it says it needs to be at least two tall, green on top, two yellow with, uh, or t two tall with yellow on top. And then you have all kinds of patterns in here, whether it's fours, threes. Oh. Uh, sometimes you'll run into Whoa. ones where you have your tallest yellow. Every adjacent purple is going to score you two points. Oh. So that can be up to like eight. Uh, eight Eighteen points. Eight, yeah. Right. So Plus. the only rule with this is that you can't score the same piece twice. So for a, for an example of this uh, green piece here, if I had a crisscross pattern. Ah. I would score four, but I couldn't score this because this piece in the center would be used twice. Okay. But if I had it like this, I'd have two diagonals, yep. two different scoring. And does the reef just continue to grow throughout the game and you're always just looking down at the top? Exactly, but there is a limit of, of being four tall, so you oh, can't okay. go taller than that. Um, and it's really clever because you're just, you're, it's, it's kind of like a sequencing game where I'm looking for patterns to then score me points the next turn. Mm -hmm. And it seems simple. But it, like like a lot of Emerson's games, there's some depth to it. Yes, yeah, that's what he does so well. He takes a concept, streamlines it, it down to its fundamentals, but still there are these layers and options to do. That's, it's, so, it's so great how he pulls that off. So it's, it's great, it's fun, it's just, there's this really cool spatial element to the game, and it looks great on the table. Mm -hmm. I like it. Game in? Oh, I'm sorry, so game ends, again, if you um, run out of one of one of the colors, okay. or if you deplete all the cards out of the deck, which okay. very likely won't happen, but it could. Okay, so it's usually if one of the colors are depleted, at that point, I guess the person who most victory points then wins the game. Exactly, you'll score a points. You'll, you'll, any cards that you have remaining in your hand, yes. you would have one final scoring. Okay. You couldn't do it multiple times, you can only score it once if you had the pattern. So a few extra points that might be hidden in the hand, Okay. Um, just in case you weren't able to fulfill what you're what you're going for. Okay. okay. Now, so go ahead. Was was this uh, a stack two or higher? Is that what that represents with the plus? Yes, okay. exactly. So if there's no plus, it means it has to be exactly that height. If it says plus, it has to be that height or taller. Okay. And so you say this game was soft launch at Origins. It's soft launch uh, here. Be at a Gen Con. What's the uh, price? MSRP. MSRP is forty. You can pre-order now at nextmovegames.com. Uh, we also have a little mini expansion called the Kings of Coral that add an extra scoring mechanism to there with fish that would prohibit you from from placing, but also benefit you if you score with them. Mm -hmm. That runs ten bucks on our website exclusively. Okay. And we also had a soft launch for another Emerson Machiuchi game, uh, Century yes. Eastern Wonders. Well, that, that was a wide launch with Eastern Wonders that came out and. Oh my gosh, what a great follow-up to uh, mm -hmm. to Spice, Spice Road. Road. Mm -hmm. I, I like Spice Road, but uh, as a player myself, I'm into a slightly heavier games. Yeah. And I like Pick Up to Deliver, and this was just my jam. Modular board so I can configure it however I want to. Uh, with all the different pieces out there, it's it just really... Um, to me, it just added a, a wider decision tree. But what's really cool, it really kind of kept some of the accessible. same mechanic as, um, as Spice oh, Road. Yeah, so yeah. I got to play this a, a few times, basically laying out tiles that are islands. Yep. And uh, like in Spice Road, it was cards uh, that were giving you su uh, supplies, you can do the trading and everything. But now there's islands out there right. uh, that can now do it. And then you have to go and set up markets on those islands yeah. as you move you're, your boat around. You're doing point-to-point -point movement. Mm -hmm. And then you get upgrades if you unlock certain things. So maybe I want a faster boat or a bigger hull or a better upgrade option. Right. So, And then once you uh, establish a market there, you can go back any time and take advantage of that. Exactly. Now, what I love about that is the multiple people can take advantage of the same tile. Right. One of the things that we found with Spice Road is like, oh, there's that really sweet card. I wish I could get it. Somebody else got it before I did. Exactly. That's now gone yeah, because everybody there's can no, share. There's no prohibition. You know, like because I run into that too. Like I'm, I'm eyeballing it. My wife sees it. I'm eyeballing it, <laughs> and it's gone. She know she's gonna hate draft it. So, uh, but now everything's wide open. Yeah. And the penalty is is at most a cube or two to, to place that trade house. Right. Exactly. And when you move your boat, the farther you move, you have to drop cubes behind, just like you kind of did when you want to get a card out of the row in Spice Road. Right? Yep. You had to drop the cubes in order to pick oh, that no, up. It's, this is what I think what Emerson does really well as well. It's like. The DNA in Century is there. Like mm -hmm. you feels like Spice yes. Road, but it's but it's uh, but it's a completely different game mechanism. So and, and to win the game, you get victory points. And the way to do that is there's these ports around the board, and they have different combination of cubes that you need to turn in. You turn in that certain combination of cubes, you get points. Much like the victory point cards that were in Spice Road, you turn in those combinations, you get those points. But there's also a variant that I have not had a chance to play where you can merge the oh two my together. Gosh. 
Yeah, so San, San to Sea uh, allows you to play not only uh, with your components of Eastern Wonders, but it takes your stuff from Spice Road, the cards, mm -hmm. yes. to add another level of to, to your decision tree. So you're going to have a hand of cards, and you can play those as if you were a trade house, or you can discard them to get extra movement. Wow. So it, it just takes the decision tree and widens even yeah, further. So bit. it's like, okay, slightly, slightly heavy to moderately heavy, and just makes it bigger and wider. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's if you haven't had a chance to check it out, Chaz. If, uh, oh, yeah. chance, maybe have you played play it already? No, I haven't. I wasn't. The, I was. Uh, I was in the Dice Tower booth. So at oh. Origins, I made my way over to uh, the Plan B booth, but it was already gone by the time I was able to get over I'll there. still Tom's copy for you. Oh, that's. <laughs> I don't mind at all. <laughs> maybe we can uh, play sometime this week because it's, be cool. it's, it's it's really good. But what's really cool is. Uh, I was talking to Emerson. He's already working on his third iteration. Yes, so this, this, is this uh, century is a trilogy of games. So we have Spice Road, Eastern Wonders, and now he's working on the next one that will be out sometime next year. That's supposedly a little bit more meaty than what yep. Eastern Wonders is. I've, I've seen early parts of it. it. It's it's taken it to another level. So I'm I'm excited. I'm really really hyped about this one um, because the more he's adding to this, it really hits that medium weight Euro gamer in me. Mm -hmm. It's still extremely accessible. That the goal is to have a two page rule sheet front and back, mm. but what he can do with so little is, is incredible. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And still keep the the same sort of uh, probably cube trading up, trading down mechanic that was introduced in these first two games. Yep. Speaking about the first one, do you know, um, with incorporating the cards from the first one into the second, was that the plan from day one with the second one, or was that something that as it was going along was kind of added in as a variant or uh, you know, a thought near the end of, hey. No, so we, we, we wanted a mixable game. Uh -huh. We wanted a trilogy of mixable games cool. to give to give it like a very unique feel. Mm -hmm. So, we, I mean, obviously a, a trilogy is great, but we wanted to add a little extra value to yeah. the consumer and to the fans. So, the way I presented it, you're getting one rule set, you're getting two because it's a separate rule set. You're getting two games in that box. Yeah. Very similar, but but different. That's really nice. And lastly, let's just go ahead and talk about the other hot game that came out at Origins. Oh yeah, I heard about this. Yeah. Uh, see, now I'm now <laughs> conscious because I had this whole thing, Coimbra. And it's like just go Coimbra. And it's like oh, or Coimbra, Coimbra. Yeah. I think it's I think it's the Portuguese is Coimbra. But I'm I'm I was trying pretty to be lazy with my tongue, so it's Coimbra. So Coimbra. I just like rolling the R. I still just call it Golem Edition. You know, <laughs> 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 so what's this little that, uh, about that one? So Coimbra is great. It's um it's an ex Egger Spiel game, which uh, I, I'm really hyped about this one because it's one of the same designers as Grand Austria Hotel, Lorenzo yes. El Magnifico. Um, so Egizia. dice are involved. Dice are involved, and these guys know how to use dice so cleverly. So mm -hmm. when you draft it, you're drafting not only for the pip value to bid in a mini auction, but then it also determines your cost, and then the color determines your income based on what color it is. So oh, it's cool. It's it's a really neat mechanism, and it's a simple decision, but it's a wide one. Oh. Um, and it's a little bit of engine building because you're trying to establish a way to get some currency and then to buy some of your cool stuff like. Uh, so that's going to equate into victory points for you, and it's it's a bit of a victory point salad. It is um, quite a bit, but if if you're into if you're into into these clever dice games, you're going to really fall in love with this one. And the art's amazing. Yeah. Uh, by the same artist by of Reef and Century the, Eastern Wonders. The graphic design in it is distinct, but really nice. It's, yes. You know, different than Century, but it's really nice. Yeah, and it's one of those things that all, what I love about these types types of dice games is. Sometimes in the past I've played Euros that had uh, dice mechanics where they still feel like ah, that's a little too much element of luck. It's not really, the element of luck really isn't there. You're going to roll the dice and basically you're, you're drafting dice at that point. Exactly. So the luck's not really this, luck's not really at that and point, it's just what you want to draft. Well, what, what I like about it, there's no penalty for low value dice like you sometimes would get in some of these right. games. I, even though I don't have a way of manipulating it too much, I have a section of the board that will gives me better benefits for having lower value dice. Yes. But a lower value dice, I could just I could take my chances and hope that you don't draft a better card, and I'm going to pay less for going second or for going third. Yeah. Yeah. So the whole drafting mechanic is uh, whoever has the highest value dice gets to pick first, but they have to pay the value of the pip value. Yeah. yeah. So there's a balance there. Yes. It, yeah. Adds that choice right there. It's but so nice. What's so neat is is that the color that you draft okay. comes in later in the round because the color activates which of the four scoring tracks will give you resources, victory points, or move uh, your pilgrim, your pilgrim around, around yep. through the uh, the monasteries. Yeah, I really want to try it out. Again, at, at Origins, it was gone, you know, before, yeah, before I got there. It disappeared. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it sounds really neat. I might have a copy to let you guys borrow. 
tomorrow. That so, would be cool. That'd be cool. And it's really cool that you guys. What now, time does the live stream end? Let's go there afterwards. <laughs> that's right. Well, that's it for, <laughs> we're done. Um, uh, it was really neat that uh, you guys are working with the uh, Eckridge Spiel now. Eckridge right. Spiel. So, so yeah. I mean, so so they're part of the Plan B family. And mm -hmm. what I like about this is Azul was the first game that we worked on as a as a as a complete group mm -hmm. with with our with our German brothers and sisters uh, for their label. Uh, but Coimbra is the first one for the Eckridge Spiel label that we we had this. And there's there's something magic in this team because the graphic design is amazing, the art's amazing, the development team and design team is just phenomenal. So, I, I speak very modestly, but they are some of the most talented people in this industry. Oh, wait, uh, you, and, and I think we've cracked them out of the park every time we brought them out. So. Yeah. And Azul, I mean that if, for being a uh, an abstract strategy game, Azul has just struck a chord with so many people. It remains. For at least uh, the last six months, it's been in the top ten of the BGG hotness list each month. Oh no, just, I know, yeah. I know. Wow! And we, we talked uh, about an earlier stream about the uh, Zool Giant box. Yeah, that's it's over there. Oh. The yeah, table. I lent that to Tom. Well, yeah. I lent it to Patrick. I think so. You, you know what? You can let me steal that one too of Tom's. You can, you can, who, need, who needs clothes when you have that for luggage, <laughs> yeah, right? No, it's I a know. literal suitcase. <laughs> that can be your carry-on. Yeah. So yeah, it's amazing. Plan B right now, I mean, has been the company to watch this year. Yeah, I would say. Yeah. I, I agree, yeah. especially for a company that's so young. You've had yes. so many great hits, but then when you're aligning yourselves with great designers like Emerson, mm -hmm. I mean, you're going to come out with some top-notch titles. Well, that's, I mean, that's what, that's what I say. We're young, but the 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 everyone on staff has got four or five years plus experience, yes, and right. it's, it just it speaks volumes that that a, a small company we consider ourselves small are able to put out really good games. I, again, I speak very modestly, and I really appreciate the kind words, but it's a, it's incredible what this team can do, so. It's yeah. awesome. And it's a, it's a great name with uh, the Plan B, which is actually uh, kind of interesting in that Plan B is usually means like, you know, there's something I really want to do, but in case it doesn't work out, you're yeah, backup. You're, 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 yeah, you got to yeah. have a backup here. Yes, you got to have a backup plan, and we have a backup plan, a Plan B for this segment. That's right. Which we can say, we, are going to challenge you to find out if you can determine some famous people's plan B. And, uh oh. And so what we're going to do? Uh oh. Uh, establish. Uh, we have eight questions again uh, that we're going to uh, bounce off here, and you're going to try to answer. And we're going to do what we did earlier uh, with uh, with Cameron from Yellow. We're going to turn this over to something where a viewer can win a prize. Once again, we have eight questions, and once again, if you get the majority of these right. You will win a $25 Cool Stuff Inc. gift certificate for one of the viewers. Not who, you. Not uh -huh. you. For one of them. Who uh, has the, the stakes are doubly high now. <laughs> yes. I want to disappoint someone. Yeah, now it's like not only you don't get anything, but somebody else doesn't get any calls of you. <laughs> and, what, and what we're going to do is how we're going to determine the winner of this gift certificate is at the end of the day, we are going to pick someone from the pool of people who have used this DTCQA hashtag uh, to send on Twitter to send us in a question or a comment or whatever. And from the pool of people that have used that hashtag on Twitter today, we're going to randomly select the winner that you're going to win this for, because so, I believe um, in you. So basically from this and the other one, we're picking two winners today. Correct. Whoa. We'll have two winners today. Of this it, well, if Hold on, did Yellow get, win? Yes. Uh-oh. <laughs> he got eight of eight on yeah, his quiz. Yeah, he got eight of eight. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Now, so, but woo. you just got to get five. Yeah, you only all got right, to get five. All right, all right. So again, let's set the expectations <laughs> for what you got to do. <laughs> <laughs> That's our theme for the week. Yeah, it's just squeak People five. are expecting this. We say, <laughs> look, look about right here. Let's set your expectations. This whole live stream. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so I think Marty is going to go have the first question for you. Here we go. Before this person joined the acting community and became hungover with fame, his plan B was a successful career as a physician. As a physician? Yes, I'll ask it again. Before this person joined the acting community and became hung over with fame, oh. his plan B was a successful career as a physician. I don't know this guy's name, but I've seen him. He's on Community. It's if you it's, can describe him, well, that's that's fair. If you can describe. Oh him. my gosh, he has a sombrero, Kim Jong or Kim. Kim Jong. Is that right? That's it. Yes, you got it. You, you are for a perfect here. start. Yep. There's your first point. We need five of those. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Remember, play along in the comments and oh, see yes. how well you do. Yes. Yeah, challenge, challenge us and see how, how many you can get. Here's your second question. At one time, this actor became so frustrated with his acting career that he temporarily switched to his plan B and flew solo as a carpenter. As a carpenter? Yep. I'll read it, I'll read it to you. <laughs> a one carpenter? Time. 
So one time, this actor became so frustrated with his acting career that he decided to temporarily switch to his plan B and flew solo as it's, a carpenter. I know, it's Harrison Ford. Yeah. I knew he was a carpenter. I knew he was a carpenter. But there's a solo. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I know how you guys are playing. <laughs> See? See? Trying to be clever over here. <laughs> Again. Expectations. <laughs> <laughs> if we could just get above that little bar. All right, next question. Before this singer-songwriter had the right to remain silent, his plan B was educating the youth of the UK as a school teacher. Mm, Before uh, this singer-songwriter had the right to remain silent, his plan B was educating the youth is it, of is the it Sting? UK. Is it Sting? It is. Yes. There. I used to be a teacher, so I knew that. Ah, good, <laughs> good job. On a roll. He's two away from winning one of you. A Pressure's on. All right. Card. <laughs> We're making this too easy on him. So oh, here's, your, here's, oh, your, no. here's your fourth question. Before this master of one-liners joined the ensemble cast of The Office, this character actor's plan B was laying down bass lines for the band The Grassroots. It's not, it, it can't be uh, Stephen Corral, no. Is it, uh, is it Kevin? No. I want to say it was Stephen Corral. I had to, final answer? It has to go, I had to go with it. I'm, I think I'm wrong. Oh, no, it's uh, the character, it's the gentleman who played Creed. And I wrote, oh. down, I wrote down Creed from the office, I forgot to write down his real name. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Creed would have been acceptable. Master of the one-liners. Yes. Remember, he only usually gave like one line per oh. episode, no, but, but it was spot it was, on. It was, it was the best. best. Yes. It was the best. Yep. Okay, next. <clears throat> Before this actor was hunting deer, he was working with the big cats as his plan B career as a lion tamer. Hunting deer? Before deer. this actor was hunting deer, he was working with the big cats as his plan B career is, as a lion tamer. Is it tamer. Robert De Niro? No, I don't think it is. No. <laughs> I don't think it is. I don't, I don't okay, know. We're going to do the whole final answer thing. <laughs> yes. I, okay, I'm going to go with Robert De Niro. I'm going to go with Robert De Niro. I think I'm wrong, but. Christopher Walken. Ah, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't, was it the deer hunter? Yes. I have never seen it, so. No, no, no. I saw the reference, I just didn't know the actor. We have three questions left. Oh, I gotta get two of them. Mike right. needs two. Do right. I get lifelines? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Well, uh. Okay, this one, okay, th this one is, I, I'm, I'm looking here and I, I don't see that, um, I remembered to put in the little clue within the question. <laughs> so this one will be worth two points if you get it. Oh. All right. So before starting his acting career, this actor's plan B was working as a hairdresser for the recently deceased. And I'll just say this this person's career, as every acting career does, has has highs and highs lows. Highs and lows. He's currently he, he's he, things are looking really sunny for him. I I don't have a clue. Oh. I honestly don't have a clue, but if I had to guess, hairdresser? For the uh, deceased. Yeah, so things are looking sunny for him. He, uh... He had, he's landed a lot of really big roles, but you wouldn't expect it. You wouldn't, yep. Yeah. Big roles. But, so but you, you wouldn't... It's not Tom Hanks. I'm going to yeah. go Tom Hanks, but you, it's not... You would, think, you would think maybe his previous career was a taxi driver, but it was not. Right. It was Robert De Niro. <laughs> No, oh, no, no! <laughs> we gotta rewrite these questions. <laughs> Danny DeVito. Danny DeVito. Danny DeVito. That was yeah. that was like a, a fourth or fifth. Okay. Yep. Yep. I, he, he did the hair I, I, for dead people. All right, here we go. Here we go. Right. We okay. got you. you this, got okay. This, you got okay. This, okay. You got this. We're this, hyped. This, We're hyped. He has to get the final two. Here we go. Before clawing his way into the role of an iconic comic book character on the big screen. This actor's plan B was performing as a party clown at children's birthday parties. Iconic cat? Before clawing his way into the role of an iconic comic book character on the big screen, this actor's plan B was performing as a party clown at children's birthday parties. Oh my God. If you think about this one, you'll just snicked, you'll get it. Yep. Let's give it some time. We'll just go on the down under. We'll give you a couple minutes. I'm going to say uh, Hugh Jackman. Yes! 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 <laughs> <laughs> I'm at four. Whew. 
Okay. All right. It was a snick that did it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, I'm sitting there thinking a of Bill Murray. <laughs> I'm thinking of Garfield. <laughs> uh, iconic comic book character. Claws. Well, well, yeah, yeah but Claw Gar and Garfield. Uh, yeah. Okay. My brain is not working well today. <laughs> I, he, he's been demoing a lot of games on the vendor hall that, floor. That'll so take a toll on anyone. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Here we go. You got to get this one. Okay. No pressure. This one's worth twelve points. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, it only needs to be one point. Okay. <laughs> Long before starting his swashbuckling acting career, this performer jumped to the street with his plan B of selling ballpoint pens by phone. Jump to the street, Johnny Depp, right? Is swashbuckling, it has to be it. You're I right, yeah! No! Oh! Yes, yes, yes! Nice! <laughs> there is your fifth point. <laughs> Woo! We'll Woo! be giving away a second $25 gift certificate. <laughs> cool stuff, eh? And Chaz, how do they enter to get that? Well, all you got to do to enter for one of the two drawings now, what we're going to have is just send us a tweet with the hashtag DTCQA. Give us a question, an idea, something. Ask us about Dice Tower Con or ourselves in general. And what we're going to do is at the end of the day, we're going to draw one of the uh, tweets that has that hashtag, and we're going to randomly pick one of them. And we're actually going to randomly pick two of them to win each of those one of the $25 gift certificates. And don't worry, those questions that you're sending in will may come up in our next segment where Suzanne Sheldon will be joining us to answer some of those questions that you've been putting out on Twitter the whole day. Absolutely. In fact, that's what's coming up next. We're going to take like a five minute break. Uh, and we're also going to remind you before that break that um, we're going we're to take a five minute break and we're going to come back in five minutes from that break. <laughs> Wait a minute, how long is the break? Yeah. Five? <laughs> then five minutes. Oh, okay, five. Okay. And we'll have like the, our last half hour segment. And then, though, at 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern time tonight, the Tom is going to be doing a live stream of Magical Athlete with actual, real, physical Magical Athletes playing the game. Well, athletes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Role playing. Yeah. It's a bit of a LARP. A LARP. Yes. yes. So you don't want to miss that. Right. Thank you so much Thank for you coming. Thank you, guys. Yes. Remember, check out Plan B Games. They're here now. If you're not going to be here, maybe check them out at Gen Con. But regardless, all these games will be available soon. If yep. not, and now in stores. Mike, thank you so much again. Thank and you, And we'll guys. see everybody here back in just a few Bye. minutes.